I'm sure the vast majority of Chicago fans didn't even notice, didn't even care that the Bulls had a game on Sunday afternoon because they were too busy focusing on those mediocre-ass, sorry-ass Bears getting embarrassed again on national TV. Gee, I wonder who could have seen that coming. But the Bulls did have a game on Sunday afternoon, and it was against another team in L.A., this time the Clippers. So you go from playing LeBron and the Lake Show on Friday night to having to come back Sunday afternoon and facing a Clippers team that was going to have both Kawhi Leonard and PG-13 in the lineup. Yeehaw! This should be fun, right? Well, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Not necessarily with the desired ending, but this team will grab you by the balls and pull you along for the ride, that's for sure. And they started off hot in the first quarter, going 8 of 11 from the field. Like, in the first quarter, Patrick Williams had 8 points. He was looking really good. Zach Levine also had 8 he got off to a decent start, which was only a uh, foreshadowing, a foretelling of what was going to come in the rest of the game. Uh, the Clippers got off to a very slow start in the first, uh, shooting only 39% from the field, scoring only 22 points. Like, you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, you know, the Bulls came to play and the Clippers are flat. And if the Clippers continue to struggle to shoot all game, the Bulls are going to win this one. Now, the Clippers came out better in the second quarter. And the Bulls in particular, like the first seven, eight minutes, were really struggling offensively. The Clippers started to find their rhythm a little bit. But as you got closer to halftime, the Bulls are starting to get their rhythm. And they ended up being able to hold off the Clippers and went into the locker room with a 59-52 halftime lead. Like, again, you know, I'll take it. They're, they're facing off against a probably top three to five team in the Western Conference in L.A., and they've got a seven-point lead on them. Like, these, what you're looking for right now with these Bulls are signs of hope, signs of optimism, signs of reasons to think that this team could eventually be better, reasons that this team is actually showing some progression and growth under first-year head coach Billy Donovan. And you are certainly getting that. And regardless of the true one-loss results of this road trip, uh, you have to be impressed with what you've seen out of this team. Yeah, Zach Levine leading the way at the half with 16 points, but man, was he only getting started in this game. Patrick Williams was at 11. He was 4 or 5 shooting, 3 or 4 from 3. So it's, a, it's encouraging to see the young man shooting those rainbows, those rainmakers from 3 and connecting. Like he's gotten off to a really good start shooting the ball. And it was one of the concerns about him, not the only concern about him offensively, but I think it's one that early on his ability to connect and hit on the outside shot consistently He's answered some of those concerns. I think you have more concerns offensively about whether or not he can grade his own shot and what his true upside there is as a guy that can penetrate, dribble drive, create for himself and others. Uh, but in terms of being able to hit a spot up three, man, he's showing himself something. And again, in that first half, the Clippers still only managed to shoot 42% from the field. Uh, PG-13 had 14 points. Kawhi only had 12. And, and even though you know they had gotten out in the, the column, like, you felt like one of these guys was bound to bust out in the second half and potentially take over. And Kawhi did kind of in the third. He had 19 for the Clippers. But it was kind of countered a little bit, not totally, by Zach Levine, who carried over his hot shooting form from the first half and hit five threes in the quarter. Five threes. Ended up with 10 in the game, but five threes in the third quarter. So even though... Kawhi started getting going and the Clippers were starting to crawl back a little bit. And you ride five threes from Levine and you end up being tied at 94 through the third. And you're again sitting there and I'm saying, you know, hey, whatever happens in this fourth quarter, like this is a positive. It's a net positive. I'd like to see him win. You know, it will get a little frustrating at some point to see this team continue to come close and continue to come up short. Like you want to see them actually win some of these games because you're not getting participation ribbons. You're not getting participation trophies. You got to win games, but you know, again, reasons for hope, reasons for encouragement, reasons for optimism. And as you went through the fourth quarter, I thought there were a couple of big plays that really changed the fortunes of this game. First, you had Nicholas Batum hit the three and get fouled. So you're talking about a four point play and then come back down on the defensive end. Lou Williams with the strip of Kobe White and comes down and hits the layup. And at that moment, you're thinking to yourself, ah, crap, they probably went the game. But again, to the credit of Billy Donovan, a credit to the players, these guys keep fighting. They keep going. Like Garrett Temple hit a big three, and 
they just scrap and they claw. Not always effectively from a defensive standpoint, but they fight. Like, they care. They try. And I give them a lot of credit for that. Ultimately, that doesn't win you championships someday. You know, you've got to actually have skill and execution and so forth. But, damn, this team finds ways to keep battling and keep fighting. And when Paul George missed one of his free throws late in the game, you're sitting there, the Bulls are down three. You've got a chance to come down and tie it. Similar situation to what you had Friday night with the Lakers. Not entirely the same because in that spot, you were only down one to the Lakers, so a two wins it. Here, at least, you've got a chance. A three ties it. And now here's a chance for redemption. Here's a chance to make right from the finish of Friday night. Here's Zach Levine, who's had a monster game, ended up putting up 45 points in this one. 45 big boys, including the 10 threes, like, he had a fantastic game until you needed the three points that really freaking mattered. And he put up another bad shot, and this time it was an air ball. And, of course, with that air ball, it goes out of bounds, and at that point in time, it's pretty much all she wrote. And it's heartbreaking. The Clippers end up beating the Bulls 130-27. to and Again, defensively not great, but when you look at this game for the Bulls, look at what they got. They got 45 out of Levine, including 10 threes. Like, that, that's a big night. Yeah, he didn't hit the shot that mattered the most, which is more of a theme than people want to give credit when it comes to Levine. Um, but in my case, it's less about the shot. It's more about the decision-making. Like, you didn't need to take the shot that early. Furthermore, you know, can you wait and see if you can get a better shot or see if somebody else has the open shot? Like, he's got the ego of an elite player, but he doesn't have it of an elite player. Uh, Patrick Williams had a great game, scored a career high, 17 points. He was 3 of 5 from 3. Like, if you're looking looking for progress, I talked about it before the season. Like, the number one goal of the program was to see Patrick Williams develop. You're seeing him develop. Like, that's the thing that matters most, way more than Zach Levine putting up 45 points and 10 threes in a loss. Garrett Temple had 18, again, providing some really good minutes, especially considering for a team already without Lowry, and without Hutchinson and without Sadoransky, they were also without Otto Porter in this game due to the back spasms. Temple was in the starting lineup, and he had a good game. But you look at it for the Clippers. Kawhi finished with 35. Paul George came alive a little bit in the fourth and finished with 28. Lou Williams gave him 21, and especially that big steal laid on Kobe White really gave him a big advantage. But beyond all of that, like you could talk about some of the specifics and the X's and O's of what happened and et cetera. You know, you could talk about some defensive lapses and some good hustle plays. You could talk about, um, you know, Levine going for 45. The Bulls shot 61% from the field and lost. 61% from the field and they lost. Like, you could talk about second chance points. You could talk about points of, off turnovers with which the Clippers had a big advantage on tonight. And that, frankly, I think is the difference. It's the points off of turnovers uh, that the Clippers got. But even beyond all of that, the Bulls shot 61 damn percent from the field. And I think the Clippers were around 50 or 51 percent, if I remember correctly. So they just weren't a little bit better from the field. They were much better from the field. As much as we could talk about the Bulls and their defense, like the Clippers couldn't defend shit either. And this is a team, supposedly, they were talking about Stacey King during the broadcast, about how you don't need to have anybody double off to help anybody with their starting lineup with Beverly and PG-13 and Kawhi and Ibaka and what in the hell are you talking about? Because clearly they didn't defend the Bulls very well. The Bulls shot 61% from the field. And a lot of that, sure, you could just say they were hitting shots and Levine was hot and all that's true, but... Damn, they couldn't figure out how to stop the Bulls for extended stretches this entire game. Really. And maybe, again, with the Bulls, it's an example of you go on the road and, you know, like the Lakers maybe a couple nights before, granted they didn't have Anthony Davis, but you still have LeBron. You still have the rest of the pieces there. Like, they probably took the Bulls lightly. It seems like Kawhi and PG-13 and Ty Lue's team took the Bulls lightly, and they almost came in and they snuck a game out on the Clippers. They almost did. But ain't that a son of a bitch, though? The Bulls get 45 from Levine, 10 threes, but the one shot he had to hit, he freaking airballs. They shoot 61% from the field, and they lose. 
Again, not trying to totally crush this team because it's not like they're facing off against the scrubs of the West. They're facing off against some of the best teams, the playoff teams of the Western Conference, and they're more than holding their own. But pretend, pretending like this isn't you know, frustrating in the moment, I can't. It is frustrating. You know, I, I tempered expectations with this team for sure. But when you see them get this close, you want to see them winning. If you're going to lose to the Lakers on Friday, at least find a way to win this game. I want to see them show some growth and progression and figure out how to win games like this. That's the growth and progression that I want to see. But if you watch this game on Sunday, Bulls fans, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Patrick Williams so far. I've seen some encouraging signs. I still see some concerns about you know, just how much of an offensive game he's really going to have. But we're still very, very early along the way. Like, what's your assessment of Zach Levine? 45 points, but not the three that matter the most. Um, how do you think this team's going to do when you start getting some of these guys back into the fold, like the Porters and the Markinins and the Sadoranskis and the Hutchinsons? Like, do we think this team could go a little bit of a run? Or do you not care because you enjoy Denzel Valentine playing that old man Y ball <laughs> with his eight inch vertical? <laughs> Uh, anyways, a tough loss for the Bulls. I think they come back now on Tuesday and they're actually at home, if I'm not mistaken, and they play the Celtics, who I believe will also be without Jason Tatum because he tested positive for COVID-19. So maybe the Bulls have a chance to sneak one out against a wounded Celtics team on Tuesday. Hey, take whatever we can get at this point. Sheesh.